I think it is worth noting that we have had no missile launches or provocative acts on the part of North Korea since the unanimous adoption of the UN Security Council resolution. And I want to take note of that. I want to acknowledge it. Kim Jong-un, I respect the fact that I believe he is starting to respect us. All right, a lot of promising words out of Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, President Trump, uh, pointing to the tensions in North Korea that could be getting better since there haven't been any more recent missile launches, and that maybe our tough talk is doing the job. The, so breathe a sigh of relief. Well, not if you take a close look at this picture of Kim Jong-un, reportedly uh, with a new type of missile that and experts have examined this, could be powered by solid fuel, which means you could go a lot further and do a lot more damage to a lot more folks. Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin. General, very good to have you. What are we to make of that and, and what they're up to? Well, I, I think that this is, uh, this is a very critical time. I think it's a huge mistake for America to think that the crisis is over. I think uh, Kim is buying time, and I think that the fact that he is demonstrating now that he has a technology that uh, we have basically uh, we're not aware of, which in fact would give him a, uh, a much better missile capability. Uh, it, it can be fueled much quicker. It can be hidden and transported much easier. Uh, this is significant, but this is a critical time. And remember this as a final point. Three consecutive presidents said that it would not be acceptable for him to have a nuclear weapon. Now, Donald Trump is left with the inaction of our three previous presidents, he's got to do something. The crisis is not over. He has nuclear weapons. What are we going to do about that? So when you look at these pictures, General, you know a lot more about this than I do. I mean, uh, they could always be fake, too, couldn't they? I mean, uh, we might be getting all nervous about stuff that's just made up and just meant to scare us. Well, they could be fake, but let's remember that he's had a lot of support from not only the Chinese and the Iranians, but he's had support uh, indirectly from the Russians as well. So the fact that he has uh, these capabilities, I don't think should be a big surprise. But remember, a lot of what we saw in that May Day parade as he uh, drove through the streets with his uh, d demonstrating his capabilities there, a lot of that was very questionable as to whether it was real or just a facade. So I don't think we actually know uh, the veracity of these reports or photographs. Do you worry, General, that if we take solace and comfort in, in, in having a few weeks go by without a missile launch, that, that that itself is a little tragic, that we're grateful that for a period of time that's fairly limited, only a few weeks, where he hasn't done this, when the average has been one every other week, that we're, we're so desperate for signs of progress, and this is Democrats and Republicans as well, that we, we, we take false comfort here. Yeah, uh, look, I, I wish that the Secretary of State and the President both would, would uh, speak a little more realistically about the situation here. Uh, it was predictable that he was going to back down on the threats to firing missiles at Guam. But the reality is he has nuclear weapons, and that's what we need to keep coming back to. Are we just going to declare victory now and, and, and say that Trump stared him down? Well, that's not good enough. We now have to decide whether... My grandchildren and your grandchildren are going to be right where we are today by having to deal with a nuclear-armed uh, country like North Korea that has, by that time, increased and enhanced capabilities. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, President Trump's going to have to deal with this on his watch, and we're going to have to find a way to de-arm uh, this uh, this madman that's sitting on nuclear weapons. What if they already have that technology? You know, you, you made a statement in the beginning about having the technology now or close to it now. What if they already have it? And like so many of these other countries, we feared getting the bomb, whether it's India or Pakistan, yeah. and they have it, and they join a club, but they're a rickety member of that club. Then what? Well, first of all, remember, Kim is, even though he's crazy, certifiably crazy, he's not <laughs> totally irrational. Uh, he, there is a streak of rationality in this guy, and he knows that if he uses a nuclear weapon on any of uh, our allies, that he is going to lose North Korea. He's going to lose his country. He's going to lose his life. And the U.S., and he knows it, and the South Koreans have had uh, concepts for years, for decades, 
they've had uh, contingency plans for going into North Korea and uh, stabilizing a North Korea uh, that would be, uh, I guess you could say, in a state of anarchy as a result of uh, a war taking place there or the North Koreans coming south. So he does not, he's not that stupid. Uh, but that said, uh, you don't know who who comes in next, and you yeah. don't know what the conditions will be in the future, and I think we've got to deal with it now. That's why I say I'd like to see Mr. Trump go ahead and deal with this, and I'd like to see him do it with a non-military capability if possible, right. and that would be through sanctions, maybe even a military blockade to isolate North Korea but give them incentives like uh, major economic benefits if uh, if they modify their behavior. Uh, okay. That's what I'd like to see, and uh, we'll just have to wait and see what Trump does. Thank you, General. Good having Glad you. Glad to be with you, Neil.